Hello, my Wealthy Wife family and friends. This is Ms. Sophia, author of Wealthy Wife, Meeting, Dating, and Marriage Man, as well as the founder of the Wealthy Wife Academy, and of course, your godmother of affluent, rich, and wealthy romance. How are you doing today? All right, I want to start out first by saying thank you for joining me. I do appreciate you guys being here. I'm going to share with you guys a sample of some of the things I'm going to be, will be discussing over on my new Patreon channel. Yes, I finally have it up and running. I am very slowly but surely adding YouTube videos to it. I've brought things out the vault. Remember, I took down like 300 plus audios and videos and about to take some more down. And I have them being now being re, um, reshared over on my Patreon channel. So I will put the link in the description for you guys to check out the Patreon channel and the different levels of uh, patronage or membership. So thank you for joining me, old school OG subscribers. Once again, huge hug. I appreciate you. For my newer, newer subscribers, I want to say first, welcome to the world of Wealthy Wife. And thank you for joining us. And hopefully you too shall become a subscriber. And of course, for my official Wealthy Wife goddaughters, uh, the alumni as well as my current students, I love you and adore you and appreciate you. We, like I said, with the ones I'm working with currently, we just finished off the Sunday afternoon tea with Miss Sophia. Because once again, that is happens the first Sunday of every month and we had a great call it was a I mean, technical difficulties and all I'm telling you oh my gosh I don't know what was in the air but I literally got I literally got locked out of one of my uh, my gmail accounts I'm like what is this I don't know the rest of the experience and I'm like hmm gmail and I we have to have a conversation yes we did <laughs> So it, it really just, it was, it was wild, but it wound up working out in the end. So I'm thankful for this. We wound up going a little bit over and having a really great discussion. So for the goddaughters who attended and our new guest, I want to say thank you. And for those of you that may have missed it, uh, email me. Email, because I know there are a couple of people that I sent information out to. You obviously did not receive it. So email me and I have something special for you. So yes, so thank you. And just so you guys know, I, I do know who was supposed to be there. I do have a list. So I guess I did miss a couple of people. But anyway, today I actually want to discuss dating, affluent, you know, what is it? My book, Meeting, Dating, and Marrying a, a Rich Man or Affluent, Rich and Wealthy Man. And the reason I'm going to discuss this is I've been seeing conversations around, well, it's not just the money, man's money. Okay, let me put this out there to you guys. If you're interested in, in affluent, fluent, affluent, whatever, rich and wealthy dating, own it. Just say, yes, this is what I desire to do. This is what I desire. Be unapologetic about it. Because why some of you are having issues is you are talking out of both sides of your neck. I don't know where it is in the Bible, but doesn't it say there's somewhere about being double-minded is an issue? Yeah, I've been going really biblical lately because I'll say this again. The Bible isn't just about Christianity, not even close, because there are different religions that pull from those same those same concepts and, and books, shall we say. It is literally about law, universal law, and it goes so much deeper. When you take time to study it, and there are absolute scholars out there that can back me up, and I'm nowhere near a biblical scholar, but I just know enough information and I understand universal law and how it works. And there's so many things that are shared in the various religious texts as well as spiritual texts that when you stop trying to take everything literally and you begin to pay attention to what it's what it literally is saying on, the, on a higher level, a deeper level, more spiritual level, your life becomes much easier. Because you understand that there is the backing of a whole universe who is there to literally assist you in whatever it is you desire. The Bible actually is a prosperity book. Now, listen to most Christian... And remember, I can talk about Christianity. I come out of it. Listen to most Christian faiths discuss it. It's terrible. It's war. It's this. It's, it's pestilence. It's all this crazy stuff. And when you discuss the prosperity side of it, people want to come for you. I'm like, are you joking? Okay, you guys are happy with the idea that, you know, you know, you should have nothing and be tortured and, you know, whatever. Just awful things. People are okay with that part. But they have issues with the prosperity part. I'm like, what? And thus, why well, I walked away a long time ago. But I still appreciate the information when you understand how to really look at it. So yes, my studies involve many, many things, okay? But I'm saying this today because, like I said, I, I've had some conversations recently and I've been watching some things go through my, my YouTube feed about, you know, 
One was talking about a man's financial status shouldn't matter, which is nuts because it does matter. It matters greatly to him, and it really needs to matter to us as women because when you're with the right man and you're the right woman for him, you guys are going to prosper and thrive. It is a team effort, and he definitely needs a well-rounded, well-informed um, and knowledgeable woman. Feminine energy is highly important in prosperity and manifestation as well as magnification. Remember, double X chromosome energy, and I'm putting it just the way I'm putting it because I have to in our culture these days, it is different than XY energy. We are tied into the universe differently. Our bodies are here to produce. And I'm not just saying human babies. I'm not just saying, you know, you know, bringing life into the planet. But it's, we're also just built in a way that we are the receivers of a great deal of information. And when we are moving in the space of being a wise woman, we understand how to process the information. And wise men, really, really smart men, understand how to honor and appreciate us. I've said before, there are men out there who understand who we are. There are men out there who know who we are and have done their darndest to make sure that you have no idea who you are. And they've done a really good, really, really good job for the most part. So, for those of you that are out there talking about both sides of your neck about, I don't want a man with many, but he does you no, know, I don't want to sound like I'm being a gold digger. Stop. Because you're never going to find what you're looking for because you don't even want what you're asking for. Facts. So, let's talk about this. And I guess I'm going to have deeper discussions in, on my Patreon because there's some things I actually do, I do desire to teach. I'm finishing up. I actually have one done. I've actually brought out two workbook journals of reference to men. The first one is literally Kiss Less Frogs, learning how to find, you know, the appropriate um, man, meaning his character, who this person is, that can is your person. Because one of the things I've just gotten noticing, and it's just still coming up, women really still have no idea who they desire. You guys can give me a whole big broad concept of the man, but you can't really fine tune who he is. And when I say fine tune, I'm not saying those rigid lists I see sometimes, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Mm -mm. Those are those, most of those lists are created out of fear and lack of knowledge, lack of knowledge of self and lack of knowledge of reference to men. And then you have men telling you what you're supposed to be doing. You guys are not following the advice of gay men. Okay. Not saying anything is wrong, gay men. Gay men are fabulous. I've, gay, I've got told you, I've got friends from all walks of life. But I'm thinking, why are heterosexual women taking relationship advice from gay men? Now, sometimes some of the things they say can make sense, but it's still, we do not relate to men the same way. Relationships are, they're, they're different. They're different. They're just different. And then you take advice from women who don't even like men. And then you wonder why you struggle. But I've come to understand and know that some women do enjoy the struggle. I've said before, some people love to be miserable. It's a comfort zone. It feels very comfortable to be in that space and keep, keep expecting bad things to happen or, you know, life is this or that because it's familiar. But yet you talk about you want this. I want a man with money. I want all these things. But you're still fighting yourself against it. Well, you got to stop. I'm going to play another, like I did the other day. There was something I saw I heard on Instagram today. And it's a prime example of having this conversation today. Let me find it. I thought I pulled it up, but I did not. But it was a bunch, a guy was asking women, and I guess they're on some kind of podcast, asking about the, how much money a man should make. You know, they would need a man to make, I guess, their husband or boyfriend, whatever. And as they were discussing it, the different amounts of money, it was in, most of them were in the six figures, middle to like upper middle six figures and a couple of them were I think one was like seventy thousand dollars two hundred thousand dollars a year so as I'm listening to these women answer this question and I under, I know that they had no idea what they're talking about they really didn't because they just were throwing out numbers and it's more than just numbers you're talking about lifestyle and what your expectations are when you're living these various lifestyles how much does it really cost to be in a space of after the rich and wealthy? And I had a conversation earlier today with someone, earlier today with someone, and we we're discussing the different levels of money. You know, you have your affluent, we have rich and we have wealthy, and I broke down here what those categories actually are. I don't know if I posted it on YouTube already. I think I did, but if, if I did, I'm going to wind up repeating myself. But I feel I need to. So here, I'm going to play this for you guys. Listen to what these ladies are saying. 
spend more than you make, like you need to make more money. 150, maybe to 250,000 a year it would be comfortable for sure. The more the merrier, but that'd be comfortable. 300,000, like I guess if they made less than that, I feel like we wouldn't have the lifestyle I wanted, so I would work. Life's expensive. <laughs> Anywhere from 70 to 100K. I would have to say 127. 500,000 dollars? <laughs> Is that bad? Probably 150 to a quarter of a million a year. If, if your wife can spend more than you make, like you need to make more money, 150, maybe to 250,000 a year, it would be comfortable for sure. The more the merrier, but that'd be comfortable. 300,000? Like, I guess if they made less than that, I feel like we wouldn't have the lifestyle I wanted, so I would work. Life's expensive. <laughs> Anywhere from 70 to 100K? I would have to say 127. 500,000 dollars? <laughs> Is that bad? Probably one f million a year. If, if your wife is more than you okay. need to make more money. So I shared that because, once again, someone asked the question, you know, how much money would a man need to make out of you, you know, to be your husband, whatever. And all the amounts of money they're throwing out, you know, because it sounds good on paper. Now, the goddaughters know because I, te I, ladies, I'll say this again, this is what I teach. This is what I do. And it goes deeper than just getting you married. Women will do anything. When a woman decides she wants to get married, she'll do anything to get married. And that even means marrying somebody who's thoroughly inappropriate for her. Just to have done it. And then have regrets later on. My goal with my goddaughters, rather they're going to stay single, like in that courtesan energy where they are the independent woman, uh, living her best life the way she chooses to, or if she becomes the wife, is that they're selecting the right individuals for them based upon knowing self, the lifestyle they desire, and understanding what some of the components of that lifestyle are. Just because cause what they were discussing salary-wise were high-earning men. These were not rich men. These were high earner, earn, earning men. Now, um, high earning men can become rich men with the right process and thinking and planning, absolutely, because they have the resources to do the investments, to, do, to, to learn, you know, go to places, learn what they need to learn to actually have multiple streams of income and to build an empire, so to speak, to build a legacy. And with the right woman who is also studying. Because, I, once again, when I hear women talking about they want to be able to spend a man's money, but you're bringing no skill sets to assist him, honey, you don't deserve the money, okay? You cannot just sit there and think being cute's enough. Because here's how that's going to work out. He may keep you around because you're cute. He may even make some babies with you. But I promise you, there'll be a mistress on the side that he actually spends time with and enjoys her company. And what a really piss a woman off is, she'll usually be older. She usually will be an older woman who he's also funding and giving money to. Because if it's a man who has money... Like I said, ladies, I, I this is my space. We are, we are walking in my world right now. And I've had enough conversations. I've seen enough things. So, like I said, sometimes they have the one who is the front one. That she is, she's the shell, so to speak, for whatever purpose he needs her to be there. But whom he truly cares about may not be the wife. If she's somebody who he has no real connection to. In relationships, our desire, when we are coming from a place of wholeness and self-knowledge and self-worth is to definitely have somebody who's compatible. I remember somebody wrote a rather long um, comment in one of my um, videos, which I read part of it. And I would not say I read all of it, but I did read part of it. And was making, made those comments, the fact that, you know, we should look for compatibility and common interest. Well, of course, it's called a relationship. And the goal is you want to be with somebody long-term. Of course, you're seeking someone that you would get along with. If you're not, what is, what, what's the problem? That's an issue. And... We still want someone who has the finances because, once again, financial status matters to a man. This is why so many of these men right now are struggling because they have no purpose. And then a the lack of appreciation for them by women also causes a problem because they have nothing to work for. I discussed the muse because she is the inspiration. Men need a purpose. Working to make lots of money for themselves is not enough. It's not enough. They don't care. They really don't care. They can live in a cardboard box and have billions of dollars just because. But truthfully, they really wouldn't be that motivated without, without a woman or a woman in their lives. And she need not be a romantic interest. She could be just somebody who he just really honors and appreciates. 
So your goal, as I've said so often, is to become the muse. And you become the muse by learning who you are and then honoring self and then learning how to honor men. So when we talk about these different financial categories, like I said, high earner. And that's where most of the wind up settling is with the high earner. Now, the issue with most high earners is they think they're making a lot of money. The wives think they're making a lot of money. And then reality hits because they're also trying to maintain certain lifestyles because, once again, trying to keep up appearances. Trying to keep up appearances when you're living paycheck to paycheck, even if it's a rather large paycheck, can become problematic. And I've seen this happen time and time again as well. You have to have a certain mindset. And I'm not, And here's the deal. When you first come into money, you're going to make mistakes if you were not raised with money. That's just part of the learning curve. I've been there, done that. It's part of the learning curve. But your goal is as a woman, especially if you're looking for relationships, is to, if he is has made those, you know, have those stumbling blocks, if you've had those stumbling blocks, one of you, hopefully both of you, is learning what not to do next time because now you know what isn't working. And then you sit down and you discuss, have a discussion as to, okay, we did this and, oh, that did not work. So what did we learn? How can we make it better? That's what I'm always, and I'm always discussing, that you can't just get in there and think you're going to just sit around and just, you know, just eat bonbons and go to mimosa brunches all the time and have no responsibility in your relationship but to spend his money. You can do that and you're both going to wind up sitting out on the curb someplace. I don't know about you ladies, but I want to know what's going on with the money. I don't need to know every single detail, but I need to know something. I need, and because here's my thing. We're sitting down with the financial planner. Who is our wealth management team? Who are the attorneys? Who are our estate planners? Talk to me, baby. Okay? And I share this because, once again, the marriage proposals I've had over the years, and I've had several, and that was one of the things they discussed with me. These men are very thorough, which I love. That's what I so appreciate about them. You know, because they also want to make sure that all that they've created is not going to disappear. The wise ones are going to choose wisely when it comes to their mate. They've worked too hard. And to think that all of that, especially that if, if they're new money, I mean, they're the first, they're the first generation of money because they worked their asses off to make it. Do you honestly think he wants to watch it go down the drain because he married an irresponsible woman? No. The smart ones, no. Not at all. So these are things I discuss with my goddaughters. So when you finally get past the point that, you know, you have this high earning man, now you're, once again, a visionary woman, and you're thinking, okay, I would love to tap him and we can parlay it into rich. Because the other categories come into it are once you get past the affluent stage, so to speak, the high earner, who is just making a big paycheck, now you, now you have somebody who has wisdom and they're now going to have to invest money and create multiple streams of income. And that can be real estate, I don't know, whatever. There's uh, so many ways to make, to make extra money. And the wife can also be contributing because she could be doing something. You know, I always think about what is, I was talking to one of my sisters, and I think it was the Pioneer Woman or something. I haven't watched Food Network. I haven't watched television in so long. But I think it's the Pioneer Woman. And she's a great example of this because and apparently she comes from money. I did not know that my sister informed me. Pioneer Woman actually comes from money. So her family, I think, her landed money. They've been, I don't know what they do, but whatever. She, 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 she wasn't broke when she got married. But her and her husband, her family, it's a team you know, she has this whole production, this whole beautiful show. I love the show. And it's a working family. She is following her passion, doing what she loves to do. And making a ton of money doing it. And showcasing periodically her life. Another one example I will give you, I said before, on, on Instagram. And I really do. I really do like lavishly. Was it lavishly Jackie? One of my sisters introduced me to her Instagram page. I enjoy her energy. Some know who I'm talking about, who I'm discussing. And I enjoy her energy. And she does share, you know, her beautiful home and, you know, pieces of her, bits of piece of her lifestyle and what she actually does. And But you understand she's working, right? That's her career. That's her business. She shares with you, you know, a bit of her lifestyle. But please understand, Jackie's working. Jackie has effort. Jackie's just behind the scenes doing real stuff. She's not just sitting there, once again, doing brunch all day and shopping at Chanel all the time. She does shop at Chanel. I did happen to see the clip where she was at Chanel shopping. Quite lovely. I believe she wanted to get a beautiful handbag and 
did she get a I think a blazer or something? I don't know. This was like last year. But anyway, so when you guys are seeing these things and getting caught up in the fantasy of, oh, I want to do that someday too, understand you need to understand what part you're going to play in the machine called your marriage or the machine called your relationship because I believe she and her gentleman are engaged. I don't know if they're officially married yet, but who knows? They might be for all we know. They need not tell you all their business, but whatever it is, they are definitely a couple. And this is a man who definitely supports his woman and seems to be doing well in whatever they're doing as a, as a team. That requires communication skills. That requires self-confidence. That requires knowing how to delegate. There are many moving parts. And that also means you have to have a man who is supportive of your dreams. Because if he's not, you're going to bump heads. And this becomes a nightmare for everyone. So that's where you now moved into the space of high net worth. And high net worth is a category. Now I'm going off and off of off of what it actually means. Look it up. High net worth because there's actually a um a, a group that I follow in reference to you know working with wealthy people. They literally are somebody that you know called the base names and leads etc. And they are mentioned that uh, you have a high net worth, which is I believe a net worth of one million dollars up to five million dollars I believe, and that would be considered a high net worth person. Now, they introduced a new category, which I did not know about until I saw this report, that they now have a category in between high net worth and ultra high net worth. They have a group called now the Very High Net Worth Group. And they are worth, I'd say, $5 million to $29 million. So that's a net worth. So that's a different layer of rich moving into wealth. And then you have what they call the ultra high net worth. Now I knew about them and they're worth $30 million up till $999,999 $999, right before you become a billionaire. And then the next category is billionaire. Now each of those categories has different needs, desires, expectations, rules and protocols. Um, things you should be thinking about. Where do you want to be in that space? I had a conversation, I guess, earlier today with somebody. She was like, oh my gosh. She goes, I have no idea. I go, I don't expect you to know. It's just a case of understanding that there are levels to this, there are layers to this, and each one has different expectations. And as the wife, depending on where you decide to fall into it, you need to be able to have conversations and you also must be a great networker. Having social skills is very, very important if your goal is affluent, rich, and wealthy dating. Even if you're coming in on that lower side, which is the high earner, that is affluent. That is definitely affluent or, affluent or fluent, whatever term, however you want to say it. It requires knowledge. It requires a level of self-confidence that most don't have because, and I've said before, ladies, if you plan on going into these spaces and you're unprepared, you're going to get eaten alive. You are. You have that mean girls on, and, and it's so crazy because it's the it's it's the lower level that tends to be the meanest. Because what I've noticed is as women become wealthier and wealthier and wealthier, they don't they one they have nothing to worry about because you get a certain level of wealth. Who's competing with you? No one. So you can be more gracious. You can be more laid back. But it's those spaces where they're they're fighting for position, so to speak. Woo wee. It is a bloodbath. If you're unable to understand, if you're not clear on what you're doing in your lives, think about this for a second. You want to become a rich or well, let's say a rich wife, an affluent or rich. You haven't got to wealthy yet. Let's say you become an affluent or a rich wife. And you're the wife of, let's go with the cardiologist. He seems to be the topic, the cardiologist. Or I remember my buddy was an anesthesiologist and the anesthesiologists make a, a good chunk of money. They're like in the mid uh, multiple six figures, so let's say three hundred fifty to five hundred thousand, a little over five hundred five hundred thousand dollars a year. Cardiologists can do a bit more than this, but let's just say you're a cardiologist wife. Let's just do that one again. And like I said, he's working all the time. Trust when I did the anesthesi when I dated the anesthesiologist, they work quite a bit, and they can because remember, well, never mind. Let's do the anesthesiologist. Let's just do him. I've had the option of both, but let's just do him. So he's in surgery all the time because he is the person once again who puts you to sleep, monitors your vitals while you're sleeping, while they're working on your body, and he's the one who wakes you up. 
and they work in teams because obviously they're doing various types of surgery. You are going to have nurses there, other other types of doctors there. It might be a, a several different surgeons there working on different parts of the body while the anesthesia is there once again watching over your body. And they can work 16 hour days. Seriously, easily 16 hour days. And ideally they have days off during the week because if they don't, they're going to be punch drunk. But sometimes they don't have a lot of time off because certain things will happen, emergencies happen, and they have to show up for these emergencies. So you have a gentleman that say, this uh, gentleman I dated, he had a desire to be chief of staff of a hospital. Now we just dated, I was not looking to be married to this individual. I liked him as a, as a person to date, but as a husband, I probably would have, you know, never mind. <laughs> He was, a, he was, he was, he was a bit much, um, but I did enjoy dating him and we were, we remained great friends even after the relationship ended. But I remember, and I think about this because let's say your man now is eyeballing a position as chief of staff for a hospital. That means he has to be very, very good socially. He ha that's why it's important that they learn the doctors that they work with. They become friends with the nurses they're working with. They become, you know, good friends with the person running the hospitals. It's all about the schmoozing. And I said before, the royal court energy has never gone away. It's part of corporate America. It's part of your day-to-day -day life, and you don't even know it. But especially if your man is looking now to move into the space of running a hospital. So he's not going to have a chance to do the smooching, not smooching, smooching, whatever, the networking <laughs> outside of the hospital. He's going to rely on you to do this. And ideally, you guys have been having discussions. He shared his vision and dreams with you. And you're like, okay, cool. Who do you need to meet? Because you're going to, need to put yourself in a position to meet these wives of these other physicians, you know, get them to like you, make sure that your kids can have play dates. Are your kids in a proper private school? The dog or cat. Anyway, are your children in the proper private school? Because that's competitive beyond competitive. So you've been sh ideally smoozing. I can't love that word, smoozing, smoozing, whatever. You've been networking. <laughs> Hopefully, you have been taking time out to pay attention to who is relevant in reference to the wives. No. Where do they go? Where do they hang out? What's their favorite gym? Who's their favorite facialist? Who's who, you know, I don't know, I told you guys, I, I'm not a church person, but maybe we, what church are you going to? Because I was laughing, somebody, I was talking to one of my goddaughters, and she, I was giving her some recommendations because she lives in New York, and I made recommendations for a couple of churches she should go to, and there's one in particular that I really, really wanted her to go to, and she's like, but I'm not religious. I go, it has nothing to do with religion. I go, do you honestly think those folks go there to save themselves? No. At that particular church, it is all about the networking, all about the see and see and be see and be seen. It's a it's a parade, and it's a fabulous people, the wealthy, the rich, the oh my god! At this church, I can't think of the name of it right now, but it is like yes, yes, that is a spot that you want to be seen. You want to be seen shaking the hand of you know as you walk out of church. People, you want to be someplace where people are getting eyeballs on you. This is strategy. And most, once again, most women are going to have no desire to do the work behind it because this is work. You know, you want the, you want the fantasy, you want the play play, you want to, you want to oogle and ah over somebody's, over somebody's stuff that they're doing. But most people have no desire to do the work. You want the benefits, but not the work. But if your goal is sincerely to be in a position where you're in, after, especially you're moving into the space of rich and wealthy, these are things that you as a woman need to understand and know. You know, I had the call on Sunday, and I had a variety of goddaughters there, everything from some very new ones coming in that are just getting their feet wet in the space of affluent, rich and wealthy, to ones that are dating and married to rich and wealthy men. I've said before, I've been doing this for a while. And, and it's so wild because if you had, if you were there, you would have heard the conversations because you have these different levels of conversations. You have the ones that once again are just coming in and they just know they are tired of dating the average man. They're tired of dating the man that just can't afford much of anything. And they're looking, and because they're doing different things to improve themselves, they're finally looking, you know, for a man in a better financial position. And that usually comes with the whole general thing I get. Well, you know, it's got to make good money. It needs to treat me well and spend money on me and blah, 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 blah. Okay, it's not enough. 
you must be more specific. And then you have the ones that are doing it, that, that are established, that are in it. I mean, doing their thing. They're, they're in the wealthy circles. They're doing the networking. They're spending time with these various people. And they're asking questions because as they're moving through it, there are certain things that are happening that they're unsure about. Because they're like, do these people even like me? What's, could they would give me a situation or scenario. I'm like, to one of them, I go, you're actually being vetted right now. Oh, based upon what you told me, this one right now was literally going through your family tree. Because before they invite you to play in their sandbox at that level, they're definitely going to be doing some background check on you. Who are you? Where'd you come from? Especially if they're starting to see you on a regular basis. So I told her, go, so just take a deep breath, stay friendly, stay social, and don't worry about it. And the beauty of it is, now here's one of the things I think is something really, really, really powerful happened for her while we were on the call. And she even said it herself. She goes, one of the beautiful things, she, she goes to, what did she, how did she put it? She goes to test, the, she goes basically to, to really back up the power of this group to say that, yes, this group is powerful. This space is, meaning it's a space of wealthy wife is powerful. She wound up receiving information about something that she wanted to do in reference to some organization she was left to become a part of that had minimal space and she goes while I'm sitting here with you in this group she goes I just got an okay and I have an inkling that the individual that she was concerned may or may not like her may have had something to do with it because in certain certain levels of money you need the okay of certain people now hear me, I realize some of you are thinking, oh my God, Miss Sophia, this is so complicated. Not as complicated as you think, as long as you understand that you're doing the work to learn the process. And once again, not everyone's going to look to date at that level of wealth. I understand it. But it's still going to have, you're still going to be dealing with some, some, some sense of it, portion of it, even if you're just coming in at the lower, at the lower rung of it. There's always going to be a hierarchy. And you just need to figure out where you want to fit into the hierarchy. Or if you don't, you know, because you don't have to. You can still be your own person, do your own thing, and contribute to how you choose to contribute. But you still need to understand who and what you're working with. So I thought, like I said, I'll go deeper into this in, in the Patreon group. And uh, I know for sure with, um, over the Patreon, I'll go even deeper into it in the, the uh, specialty groups like the uh, Sabrite and the Sanctuary group. But I want you guys to think about this for a second. What do you desire? Because the other uh, workbook I'm working on, I'm working on details as we speak, is one on the different wealthy, affluent, rich, and wealthy men, men or man archetypes. Because they have archetypes as well. And for you guys to begin to figure out who you're attracted to and why, I'm sitting here doing research on it just out of curiosity because I said before, I'm a researcher. I do every, if I'm leaving my house because I am a natural introvert. And I know people never believe me when I tell them that, but I am. I love being home. It does not fade. I could be at home for months. My environment is set up for me to be very happy in my space. My books are here. My music's here. My cat's here. I'm, right now, I'm staying with my youngest son. My son is here, you know, when he's not working. <laughs> but I'm good. I'm very happy. And I enjoy my own company. So if I'm leaving my house for any reason, extended time, you better know I have a strategy and a plan. I am moving with a purpose. I am deliberate when I'm out there. I have an idea of who it is I'm looking to meet, what I'm looking to experience, how, how I set my stage basically, meaning how I'm dressed, how I smell, the whole, I told you, the whole persona, the activities I will participate in, or what I'll be doing, um, how I, how I set up my props because yes, ladies, I've shared the props before. I always have books on my table, and then I'm going to give you some game. And the one book I always have on the table, if I say if I go to the cigar lounge, is Think and Grow Rich. Or if I'm at a coffee shop, I always have Think and Grow Rich on my table because that is a rich man's bible. Every man who is on the either the come up, he's up and coming, or he's established has read and reread and reread Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. I have started more conversations with men off of that book. And they've been very, very good conversations and it has wound up blooming into something bigger, better, and more. 
So I want you to think what I'm asking you and what I'm saying. If your goal and desire is to date men with money, own it. And if your goal is to establish long-term relationships with them, that can be friendships, business partnerships, relationships, romance, whatever, are you willing to do the work to make that happen? It takes effort. It takes discipline. It takes wisdom. It takes strategy. I'm going to close on this point. I was talking to one of my sisters, and... We were talking about how, let's say, for example, somebody wants to be an athlete. And she was discussing how there are certain demographics that are, they don't play when it comes to getting their daughters married. Remember Ruth and Naomi? I've done enough conversations about them. I have a whole class on Naomi and Ruth. Matter of fact, it's my wealthy wife one, how to become a wealthy wife. It's got all kind of strategy in that particular course. It's currently unavailable. But I think about it because for those who went to college and got their MRS degree, meaning they went there to get their, you know, their, to become engaged and find their husband, that is something that they're trained up to do. That was not like she just miraculously, you know, found the man she's going to marry. No, she's very systematically. She was raised at the knees of her mother and grandmother on the strategies and what to do and to look for and the whys behind what she's searching for in her husband. The first two years, they're going to party their asses off. But in that process of partying, they're still eyeballing the potential guys, finally trying to figure out where they want to settle in to start selecting who is going to be the man who's going to propose to them. And here's the thing. They're not doing anything active, ideally, to chase a man. They understand the strategy to get the man to pursue. And I shared this earlier when I said what I was talking about. Because so much of it is you guys putting yourselves out there and, like I said before, lowering your standards. and just Oh, my God, there's so much stuff going on that makes my skin crawl. It's like, oh, my God, it's so gross. Because it's unnecessary. Men still love to hunt and pursue. And when you understand how to create that environment that invites them to do so, and there are women, I am one of them, I teach that, but there are women that are very purposeful. So when they go, they have a purpose. And she was discussing how with athletes, and I've noticed, like I said, because I study athletes, because once again, I study athletes rich and wealthy from all these various various categories. And I noticed that in football, most of the men, if they're married, they have married their college sweethearts. Now, there are some who did not, but most of the guys, if you notice them and see them, they're either still dating their college sweetheart or they've married their college sweetheart. And for the stragglers that are still out there, and she was saying how if you're noticing that you're seeing more European descent girls that are marrying melanated men, their mothers are strategizing for that. Don't think that was random. It wasn't random. It, it, it was not random. Not at all. Because... If you're going into the field of sports and you're looking at that money and you're looking at those potential contracts and they will literally follow stats on somebody, you think they're not watching drafts? You think they're not paying attention and names are popping up because they're thinking, you know what, we want to get her married. The athlete will be a great option for her because maybe, you know, I don't know, the other, other fields are not as appealing to them. Strategy. So that she is being placed in front of, she is learning things she needs to learn so that she can fit in and be appealing to this young man. Interracial dating is a very real thing, but people don't understand. There are certain people that play with it, and there are other folks that, once again, strategize for it. And I'm all for dating who you love and who you truly, truly, sincerely, sincerely care about. I've said before, I've dated all across the color zone. My family, I said before, my youngest son, his father is blonde hair and blue eyed. You get no more um, European descent than him. So I have no issues with dating across color lines. Never have. Hell, I really can't because my great grandfather's European descent. And then the rest are actually. Um, of various uh, indigenous tribes here in this country. Yeah, I love my family. Very diverse. But yeah, we are tribal. I, I, I come from a tribal family. Like I said, then there's that one European descent individual in there. Anyway, but I'm saying it's done with strategy. Like I said, this stuff is not happening randomly. 
These girls are learning. They are being taught. And my goal is for more of you to take the time out to listen so you can be taught for the long term. Not just a short term game, not just a little cute gifts. The gifts are great, but do you desire long term success? This is usually when I want to meet some of the ladies that have been ch chasing after short terms. Because I said before, I've got goddaughters coming from all kind of groups, all types of ideologies. And by the time they get to me, they're going, I need to readjust my mindset because I desire a long-term relationship. And I understand that I cannot treat a man for long-term the way I've been treating these guys for these, you know, this short-term stuff. It's a different headspace. So anyway, think about it. And go ahead. I have the one up. I have the first workbook up, The Kiss Less Frogs, is available. I'm fine-tuning the one on the athlete, rich, and wealthy man archetypes. That one will probably be ready before the weekend. I, like I said, I just, I've got to add a few more things to it. It'll be ready. But that, those two things are solely focusing on men. So you guys, once, excuse me, once again, have a better idea of what you're doing in your wives. And to really begin to do your research. I love what I do. I thrive in my space. My goddaughters thrive. And once the light bulb clicks in their heads, as a while I'm always hammering and always saying, do the research, do the research, do the research. And they're like going, oh, oh. Then life begins to line up for them as to what they're looking for, who they're looking for. And then they can begin to enjoy these magnificent relationships because now they're drawing to them the men and opportunities and experiences which speak to their heart and soul. So if you two are ready, like I said, take a look at the workbook, at least for Kiss Less Frogs. It's very, it's really, really good. I've got it on the online academy right now with a couple of, you know, uh, audios that will explain how to use it. Or you could just purchase the workbook and figure it out on your own if you choose to. But either way, check it out and we'll talk soon.